Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayami Gitin Daf Membeis. We are holding right on top Omar Rabba. So yesterday we learned the Machlekes between Rebbe and the Rabbonon. If one wishes to free half, only half is Ebed. According to Rebbe it works, according to the Rabbonon it doesn't. What would be the reason why it won't work? That's because we compare the releasing of an Ebed to the divorce of an Isha, which only works 100%. It can't be a partial, a halfway divorce. Comes Rabbah and tells us, Amar Rabbah, Machlekes. This whole discussion, meaning, the reason that it shouldn't work is only b'sheshichreir chetzyoi. So the owner let go of half the Eved, v'hineach chetzyoi, and retained ownership on the other half. Since it wasn't a complete freeing of the Eved, then it doesn't work. At least according to the Chachamim. But in some cases, even a half shikhrer can work if the owner no longer holds on to him, totally gives him up. How is that? Suppose he sold half the Yavid, so now he has half, and he takes that remaining half and he frees him. Or he did it at the same time. Or or half was given as a as a as a gift. Basically, he's totally giving him up. He's totally freeing him. But it's sort of a combined process. Half sale, half shikhrer. That works. Why? Kivan the Kanafik Minekule, because ultimately the Evan is totally leaving the master. Divri, Akoyal, Kana, all agree it will work. When you retain ownership, and you hold on to part of it, that might be problematic. That's not comparable to the get of an Isha, but if you're totally letting go, what difference does it make if it's by way of release, by way of sale or gifting? That's Rabba's Chiddush. So in this case, all agree it works. Amrle Abai responds Abaye. So in this case, when he's totally letting him go, using this combined process, there is no machlekes. You mean everybody agrees it works? Really? We have a kasha from a brisa which seems to tell us otherwise. Vatani chada. We have two brisas. Brisa number one says like this. So I own two avadim. Eved one, eved two. And I write off all my assets. I have a star, in which I write everything that I own is given to you, Mr. Evid. One. The same with Evid two. And Rashi says I was mezake to both. I had a shliach pick up both documents on behalf of both Avadim in one shot. Ravas achas. So it's a sort of a simultaneous process, a complete process. I'm totally letting go of all my assets, including the Avadim, which are part of my possessions. What happens? Kanu, so they acquire those possessions, including themselves. They sort of acquire themselves in the process as well. Now, of course, they have to release each other. Why is that? Because they're, they're kind of partners now. I gave everything that I own, including my slaves, to these two slaves. So slave one acquires half of everything, including half of himself, uh, but the remaining half belongs to slave two, and likewise by slave two. So they have to release each other as well. They have to write a, a get shikhr to each other. But ultimately, it's clear that they both left the domain of the owner. I lost them both. Even though it wasn't you know, one complete release, it was sort of, um, you know, giving half of yourself to yourself, and the other half, you have to go find your friend to, uh, to release you, because he owns the other half. So it's a sort of a process, until he, he's totally free. But it works, even though it's incrementally, even though it's half at a time. And their answer is because 
in terms of the owner, in terms of me, the owner, I gave it all, all up completely. So it's a total freeing of the Yavad, a total relinquishing of rights. And that's a right to Rabbah. Rabbi said, the Lashon Kivan the Kanafik Mine Kule. Since he's totally left my possession, it works. Even though it's still a while until he's totally free. So that's one Bryce. Bryce number one indicates that it works. Bryce number two indicates otherwise. Vatani Idach, listen to the second Bryce. It doesn't work. Haimer. Kal Nechasai Nesunin. Laploini. Uploini. Avdi, Avodai. So again, he takes a document, a star, and he writes, all my properties, all my possessions are hereby being given away to Evid A and Evid B. What's the Allah? It doesn't work. They don't go free. Af atzmam laikanu. They don't acquire themselves, meaning they stay Avadim. It's a direct contradiction to the previous price, which says that they go free. How do we reconcile? So we must say that this uh, hinges on the machlekes of yesterday. A partial release. Does it work or not? Rebbe will say yes. Reflected in Bryson number one. Rabbanon will disagree. Reflected in Bryson number two. My love her Rebbe, but Rabbanon. So we must say the Bryson number one is Rebbe. Bryson number two is Rabbanon. That's a kasha to Rabba, who says that all agree. In a case where the owner lets go entirely, so even though it's sort of an incremental process that's going to take place to get him totally free, but if I'm totally letting go, it works. We're going to all shittas. And here we seem to see that the Rabbanon disagree. It's considered like a partial release, which doesn't work. Says the Gemara Loi, perhaps not. Idividi Rabbanon. Both Bryson number one and Bryson number two are reflective of shittas Rabbanon. The difference is... Well, how the Amar Kulay? In Bryson number one, it works because I gave away all my assets, all my properties to Evid A and Evid B. So, I'm giving everything away. I'm letting go entirely of the entire Evid. It so happens to be that he has to go to his friend to effect his full release, but I'm giving up entirely. As opposed to Bryson number two, perhaps it's speaking where I didn't give everything away. I just told the Evid, look, uh, here, uh, take half my assets. I did the same with Evid number two. So Rashi says, even if I I, I, I made the, uh, the star to both of them at the same time, but maybe I'm giving them both the same half. <laughs> so this is, I'm actually giving up the entire Evid. I'm only giving away half my assets, half the Evid. So that's why it doesn't work. That's why. But should I have given everything away, of course it would work. Even though it still, you know, it requires a couple of steps until the Evid is totally free because he has to go obtain the Shtar from his um, co evid But I'm giving up everything. And that's why it works like Rama. So we answer the Kasha. Bryson number two, where it doesn't work, is because he didn't give everything away. Asks the Gemara about Mugtani Seifa, but if you take a look, close look at the second part of that second Bryce, the Seifa, Vim Amar Chatsi Chatsi Lekonu. And in fact, if he says, I'm giving away half my stuff to you, half to you, it doesn't work. Mechlal the Reish Amar Kulay. Apparently, the first part of that second Bryce, is discussing where he gave it all away. And still the Bryce says it doesn't work. No, Purusha come up Farish. Perhaps the Bryce is just explaining itself. So I gave everything away to the Avadim. Af so they they don't go free. And the Bryce explains Ketzad, how why? How? What are we speaking about? Kigain the Amar because he gave away half. Half to him, half to him. As we said before, that's not indicative of total release. And that's why it doesn't work. So again, it sort of backs up our suggestion. Now, Bryson number two, where it doesn't work, is speaking because he didn't give everything away. He's still holding on to half the evidence. Of course, he doesn't go free. 
will prove in fact that Bryce number two is discussing this type of case. This because if you'll tell me that the first part of that second Bryce is discussing a full release, a full gift, and still the Bryce is telling us it does not work. So why does the Bryce have to proceed with a case of half? Well, how to Amar Kulay like Kana? Look, could you imagine if I'm giving it all away to you, Mr. Evid, and all to you, Mr. Evid? It doesn't work. Because as we said before, it still requires more steps. They have to approach each other for the full release. So for whatever reason it doesn't work, well, if that doesn't work, Amar Chatsi Chatsi Mi Boye. It goes without saying. Do we even have to discuss where he says, I'm giving you half, and then I'm giving you half? Of course it doesn't work. What does half mean? So the fact that the Bryce continues on with the case of halves to tell us that it doesn't work, that's because in the case of the full gift, which is the topic of the ratio. Sorry, so apparently the, the Bryce is not discussing a full gift because if full doesn't work, then partial certainly doesn't work. So the fact that the Bryce discusses partial gifts tells us something about the topic of discussion of the Bryce, which is that it's only speaking about partial gifts. No, Imisham Hala area, this wouldn't be a proof. Tono Sefer Lagulia Reisha. Perhaps the Reisha is speaking about a full gift and it still doesn't work. Inconsistent with Rabba. The reason why the Sefer had to discuss half gifts to be indicative, to explain to us, to point out to us what the Reisha is speaking about. So like Tami, you shouldn't have the notion that Reisha the Amar Chatsi Chatsi. The reason why in the first part of that second Reisha it doesn't work is because he only gave away half of his possessions. Aval Amar Kuloi Kono, but if he would have given everything away, it would have worked. That's what you would think. You would mistakenly uh, attribute the halacha and the b'risa to a case of chatzi. That's why it doesn't work. But full does? No. That's why the b'risa has to come back and explain itself. Tono sefer. That's why the b'risa continues. Damar chatzi chatzi. Partial gifts doesn't work by the avadim. Oh, that's the second part of the b'risa. Mechlal the reisha. Damar kulay. Apparently the first part of the b'risa, a different case, is speaking with a full gift. Vafilach lekana. It still doesn't work. Not like Rav. So basically we have no... Uh, proof that the Bryce is speaking about partial gifts, but still we want to suggest that it is speaking about that case. But were he to have given everything away to Evid A and also to Evid B, where he's sort of relinquishing all rights to the Avadim, even though it didn't affect a full freedom yet, they have to still approach each other for a full release. But since I'm giving everything up at this moment, that's a proper Masa Shikhr, it works. Another way to answer the kasha from the Bryce's. Remember, Bryce 1 said it worked. Bryce number 2 said it doesn't. Like kasha. Very simple answer. Kamishtar echad. Kamishne shtaris. The first Bryce, it worked because he gave them two documents. Whereas in Bryce number 2, it didn't work because he incorporated everything into. He's trying to save on paper, on parchment. He included everything into one document. And just like by. A Gerushin of an Isha, you can't be Megarish two women with one get here as well by the Shtar Shikhr of the Evid. You can't use one document for both. That's why it doesn't work. So it's sort of a, a you know a, a side technical problem why it, done, why it didn't work. Says the Gemara Bishtar Echad. So if Bryson number two is speaking because it was in one document, that's why it's failed. My area Chatsi Chatsi, so why does the Bryson? I have to uh, elaborate that we're speaking that he only gave away partial part of his properties. And that seems to be the problem. I feel Amar Kulei Nami Lekano. Even if he would have given everything away to the Evid, it still wouldn't work because he included two Avadim in the same Shtar. It's exactly what the Bryce is trying to say. You have to sort of read into the Bryce. So doing this doesn't work. Af Atzmo Lekano. When? Why? Because it's in one document. But if you would be giving away everything, to Evid A and everything to Evid B, it would work. Because ultimately I gave up all rights to both Avadim. They may own part of each other. That's not my business. I gave everything away. It's a full shikhar on my account. 
But Im Amar Chatsi Chatsi. However, if you indicated only partial gifting, then uh, it doesn't work, whether it's in one document or two documents. After Shnei Shtaris Nami Lekom. Yibayaseima. A third way to understand the discrepancy between the Brises and reconcile it with Rab, Rabba's Chidush. Yibayaseima Lekash. Kamabas Achas. First Brisa. And the second price. I'm both speaking where he said coolly. I'm giving everything away to you, Mr. Evan. Everything to you, Mr. Evan. So I'm backing away from both of you. I'm giving both of you up. So it should really work. Kambabasach. So Bryce number one was speaking that he did simultaneously. Like we said before, he had a you know a third party acquire both documents on account of both Avadim. So it was sort of a one go. This way, I'm giving both of you up at the same time. And, and fully giving up uh, both of you at the same time. So that's why it, it works. Kambazech has a price number two speaking where it was done first Ebed A and then Ebed B incrementally. In which case, it's a problem. Why? I understand why Ebed number two it's too late for him to be kind of. They'll kind of like come because Evan number one already acquired everything. Because when I turned to Evan number one, I gave him everything that I own. You know what it included? It included Evan number two. He's now the new owner of Evan number two. Ella Kamo Likli Nafshe. But what about the first Evan? Why can't he have a successful reacquisition of himself? Let him be kind of himself. Likli Chadl Chavre, be kind of his friend as well. He's a total master, he's a total owner. So what's wrong with the uh, with the case of Bezeh At least the first lucky event should be kind of everything. The Bryce seems to indicate nobody goes free. So we're sort of pushing away this pshat, al machbarta Apparently the correct and clear solution is, as we said earlier, in the first uh, two pshatim, Kedushanin and Mikar, as we explained before, those pshatim work better. Ravashi Omar, Shani Hasam the Kakar Avodai. Ravashi had a different approach. He says, here's a very simple answer to your question. In Bryce number two, it doesn't work. You know why? Because he referred to them as Avada. Remember, Bryce number two read like this. Hakoisif. Ha'imer, kol nechosen is sunin l'pleni upleni avodai. Oh, that was the undoing. Why did he call them Avadai? He's trying to get rid of them. Avadai means they're still my slaves. So he was thinking that perhaps he can give them gifts, he can give them the other possessions without, without releasing them, and that was a big mistake. Because an Evid can't acquire anything without his master. So it doesn't work, period. Amalei Raphram, so Raphram asked the Kashala of Ashi, you're dwelling on the Lashan Avoda, you know, you can work around it. Vidilm Avoda, show you Kvar. Avoda, it means my former Avoda, which are now going free. We like to we have a mission like that. A koisev kono chasav la avdoi. So, a person writes a, a document, a ksav, that he's um, giving everything that he owns to his uh, evid. Yatzel lecheres. That's it. So he goes free because he himself is amongst the possessions that he's getting. Right. So he's reacquiring himself. Shir kaka kol shul leyatzel lechir. Tanakama says, if you left behind something, I'm giving you everything except for you know one little corner of my land. We say it doesn't work. Maybe he meant to, to hold on to the evid who was like karka. Bottom line, it's not a gift. Reb Shimon Eimer loydum who ben chirin. Even if he leaves behind something, a piece of karka, the evid still goes free. He's retaining some of the karka, but he's letting the evid go. Actually, yeah, unless he says, Kol nechassayin is soon in plenty avdi, until he writes as follows. All my assets are now hereby being granted to Joe, my Evid. Chutz me'echad meribah shebehen, except for one part in 10,000. That's sort of an unknown. You, maybe the Evid is the one part in 10,000. In his mind, not worth more. So that's a little different. The ratio, he left behind some karka. That's not the Evid. But if he says, I'm holding on to some portion of my possession, you never know. Maybe he meant to hold on to the effort. Okay. Bottom line is, time of the Amar. 
the concern is only when he adds this stipulation. But otherwise, if he just says, you know, call Chosai Avdi, it works. Even though he referred to him as Evid. If he didn't leave anything behind, Kani, it works. Am I why? But Evid Kakarile. Didn't he refer to him as Evid? Apparently, that doesn't hold anything back. Ella Avdi means Shahya Kvar. He was my Evid, my former Evid, who's right now becoming my non Evid. Hachanami, here as well, in the case of the Brysa. Avada, Shahya Kvar. Avada just means my former Avada. So that's not really a reason to stop the process. Okay, bottom line. We started today's daf with a chiddush in the name of Rabbah. Halfway uh, release uh, can be a problem. Only if I'm not letting go of the entire Evid. But if I'm letting go of the entire Evid, even though it was a, a multi-stage process, half was given to Matana, and the other half I'm releasing, any sort of combination, which ultimately leads to his full release, Right? As she says, I sold half and then I released half, or I did sale and release at the same time. Kivan the Kanafik Mine Kulit. Ultimately, I'm totally letting go of him. With this uh shikhr, he's totally out of my possession now. It works. We had a kasha from two brises, we had uh, several ways to understand the brises, which would still be consistent with Rabba. Bryce number one allows it to work, Bryce number two doesn't allow it to work. In the case where I have two avodim and I gave them both my possessions. So, uh, shot number one was that Bryce uh, number one, the way it works, is because I'm giving everything away. As opposed to Bryce number two, where it was just a half gift. A half gift is worthless because maybe you're holding on to half the avid. Another shot we had, if it's two separate documents, it works. But if they're both being released with the same document, that doesn't work. We had another pshat, uh, maybe Bezecher Zeh is a problem, we had a kash on that. We had another pshat, maybe the word avada indicates that they're still currently avadim, and we negated that pshat. Continues the Gemara. Let's go back to a, a half evit, which uh, was discussed in our Mishnah. Two partners owned uh, an evit, one of them freed him, so now he's half and half. Sunday he works, Monday he's off, etc. Suppose this Evid, this half and half Evid, was struck by an ox, by a bull, and injured. Who gets the money? Who gets the compensation? Well, it depends on which day. If it happened on Sunday, where he's meant to work, so his owner is now entitled to any money that he brings in. The money goes to the master. If it happened on Monday, where he's on his own, Lots when the money goes to himself. The Evid keeps the money. Asks the Gemara. So you're sort of splitting it by days. One day I'm an Evid, one day I'm not. El mi'ata, yoyim shel rabbi. Yisar shivcha. If so, when it comes to marital questions, well, on Sunday, where he's an Evid, he can marry a shivcha. Yoyim shel atzma yisar baschayrin. So on Monday, when he's a free man, he can marry a regular isha. It's pretty uh, astonishing. Says so the Gemara, no, Isur like Kamrina. We're not discussing Isur status related issues. You can't split that. He is what he is entirely. He's a partial Evid, he can't marry a Baschard. He's a partial Ben he can't marry a Shivcha. But here we're discussing, you know, his monetary um, commitments. And as she says, the Zachia of Mamun on Sunday belongs to the Master, whether it's his work whether it's his income, whether it's uh, income through damages. Tashma, here comes a kasha on this uh, concept. So a bull killed this uh, 50% Evid. And we know that if this happens with a regular Evid, there's a knas. The owner of the bull is penalized by having to pay 30 sela to the owner. So what happens with this half and half person? So half of the 30 sela goes to his master. Now if this bull would have killed a regular free man, there's something called kaifer. his market value has to be paid to his heirs, to his yarshim. Since he's half Evid and half Ben Chirin, 
we split everything down the middle. Half the knas goes to his master, and half the kaifer to his yarsh. Am I why? It should depend on which day it happened. If it occurred on Sunday when he's meant to work, everything goes to the owner. On Monday, everything goes to the yarsh. It's like the uh, compensation for injury discussed before. Am I? Okay, that we label here as well. When it comes to the um, compensation upon his death, on Sunday the money goes to the rabbi, if it happened on Monday, it goes to himself and to his kids. Shaniyach, it's very different in this case when he was put to death, the kokali karna, the care and the principle, the actual item is gone. The evidence is dead. So here, you can't really, you know, it's not a, an income related issue. The actual Evid relates to both, relates to the owner, relates to his, uh, himself or his Yarsha. If the Evid is around and he's producing income, anything produced on Sunday totally belongs to the owner, and likewise Monday to himself. But in terms of the principal item, that's certainly fully shared 50 50. So, irrespective of when the incident occurred, the owner is entitled to 50%. So what's the example where he's injured without it affecting the actual principle, without having permanent effect on the event? Okay, so he was struck on his hand and it sort of shriveled. It was injured in a way that it's temporarily out of service. But it's going to recover. So this is a temporary injury. So that compensation is the topic of discussion. And it all depends on you know, when the incident occurred. This works according to Abayi. So Abayi, in Masechus Baba Kama, has a discussion with Rav. In uh, such a case, where, you know, Ruvain strikes Shimon and injures him in a way where it's not a permanent thing. It's, it's, he's going to recover. Abayi says there are two separate tracks of payment, two separate obligations. There's something called Sheves G'doyla, a large Sheves. So typically Sheves means like unemployment, loss of wages. But there's a large Sheves, which Rashi explains to mean the uh, loss of market value. A person that can't function properly, his hands are not functioning, is not worth as much. So that's a lump sum payment. How much he devalued him in terms of his market value, in terms of his temporary injury. How much would he be worth less today than yesterday? Shabbos Katana means, well, even a person, later later with an injured limb, can still um, you know, do light work. He can serve as a night watchman. And even that he can't do because he's now lying in bed. He's ill because of the, you know, the injury. So that's a, another level of compensation. And both have to be paid off. Shevaz Gedele and Shevaz Katan. So in our case, where the Evan was struck by a shire, and we said it was a temporary injury because of a little bit of permanent dam- damage, then, you know, the day on which it happened is, you know, irrelevant. We said that before, right? So we're speaking about a, 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 a Nezek which uh, will uh, repair itself, which will heal. And the owner of the shire, the animal, has to pay that off. So according to Abaye, that in this type of case, you give Shemes G'dayla, Shemes K'tano, Shaper. So it makes sense that the uh, the Shur will have to pay for the Nezek, the uh, the Shemes G'dayla, the actual damage, the uh, devaluation in terms of market value. But according to Rava, who holds that in this type of case where the injury will heal itself. There's no, there's no nezek to pay. There's no real devaluation in terms of market value. He's going to recover. So what are you obligated to pay? You take it day by day. Okay, today, instead of you know earning X amount, you're only earning this much or nothing. So every day you have to make a separate appraisal in terms of loss of wages. There's no nezek here. There's no, since there's no permanent effect, you can't consider this fellow to be liable for devaluation in terms of market value. There's no actual devaluation here. It's just a temporary uh, you know, loss of wages that we're dealing with. 
So instead of paying nezek, you know, there are five things. Nezek, tsar, ripuy, sheves, and boishes. There's no nezek, it's just sheves, loss of wages. So, hello, the rabbi, the amr, and recently, el shiftish v'chol yuyam b'yoyim. So the kashi is, hayu sharhu. This injury in al occurred through a shar. And a shar, and a mishalem, el nezek. A shar is not obligated for the other payments. Sheves is unique to a person. Who inflicted damage, but a shur inflicted damage, there's no chiv, and Rashi brings the pasik for it, so there'll be no obligation at all. Why are we speaking about payments here? If it's a shur that inflicted temporary damage. Tutu Rutsum, you say, we can say she ko adam, that in fact, Al Gemara is speaking that the Evid was struck by a man, so there is that shavas. But you say, another answer is, you're right. The halacha that we referred to before with the Evid being struck, it's not a Mishnah or Bryce, it was presented, you know, by the Memorim. Remember, the Rav is really right. Rav disagrees with that halacha. It wouldn't work with Rav. Okay, so in summary, you have an Evid who's half Evid, half non Evid. In terms of marital issues, of course, he's sort of in limbo. Can't marry a Shifcha or a Bas Likewise, if he was struck down and killed, of course, then the owner and his Yarshim split 50 50. If he was injured in a way that he will recover, so that depends on the, on the day on which the injury occurred. The day that he's meant to work, the income belongs to the owner. Otherwise, it belongs to himself. Here comes another question. Interesting question. We had a halacha that a person is mafkir, his evid. So he gives up the monetary component of the evid. I no longer own the evid, but the evid still needs a shtar shikhrur, to totally free him and allow him to marry a Bas Yisrael. In this interim state, a Mu'ukav get Shikhr, he's awaiting to get Shikhr. What status does he have? If he's killed by a bull, is there the 30 Sela Knas given to the owner or not? Yesh no Knas, Ein Knas. Kesef Shloishim Shkolem, Yitin La Adoinav, Amar Achmon. Torah says you give the 30 to the Adoin, Vahailav Adoin. He's no longer his master because he gave him up. Oydil Mokivad Mokhusa get Shikhr, Adoin Kavina Bey. You can say, well, He's still waiting for my uh, release document. I'm still an owner. I'm entitled. Tashma has a right. Hey, Miss Misha, that's your evidence. That's a bit hard. Right? The price that we mentioned before. Ashar struck down this half and half evidence. No, he's in Chatsi Knasl Rabbi, the Chatsi Kafel Yarshav. Half the Knas goes to the owner, half the Kafel to the Yarshav. My love, Kamish Nachroina. Shall we not assume that this price reflects the new version of the Mishnah? Discussed at the end of our Mishnah, where Beis Hillel conceded to Beis Shammai, right? And uh, we can't just leave him in limbo, he can't marry, so we force the master to let him go. So the owner no longer has a right to hold on to him. He just has to give him the get shikhrs. That's Mu'ukavich, get shikhr. That's a classic case of Mu'ukav get shikhr, and still the Bryce indicates that if he was struck down, there's Knas, and the Knas goes to its owner. No, perhaps the Bryce reflects an earlier point in history. The first version of the Mishnah, where Beis Hillel did not uh, obligate the owner to let him go. He's an ordinary Evid. Of course, there's Knas. It has no relevance to our discussion. Toshmai comes another Raya. Again, the question is, an Evid on his way out, just waiting for the Shtar. What happens to his Knas if he's killed? Tashma hipolas shinoi, vesimias enoi. So we know that if a master removes the teeth, a tooth, or he blinds the eye of the evan, he goes free. In this case, he did both, double whammy. He knocked out his tooth and blinded him. Yaitzu bishinoi. So he can go free based on the first infliction, the tooth. Venoi said me enoi. Now that he's free, on account of the tooth, the second one is an ordinary injury that the um, inflictor is responsible for, so the master has to pay for the uh, eye. And the Gemara is assuming, although the Evid is going to go free, but he still has to have the Shtar Shikhra. He's not totally out. So he's sort of in that interim period. And we see that the owner has to pay him for any further damage. We shall assume that an Evid, in this interim state, is still classified as an Evid. Her earns Knas, meaning if the struck Evid was struck down by Yashar, there is Knas to be paid to the owner. Uknas Larabi, the owner gets it. Well, even if 
since if other people would strike him, the money would go to the owner. How can you say if the owner, the master, strikes him, you have to pay the, he has to pay the evid? Look, if I'm the owner, I'm getting paid by other people. Should there be a Misa at this point? I'm entitled to the Knas. Does that make sense that if I inflict damage to this evid, I have to pay him? <laughs> it's unreasonable. Oh, apparently, the evidence is holding at this point. Mu'ukav get shichrur. There's no knas. I'm no longer considered his master. That's a riot to our uh, shaila. No, they will command the Omar ain't it tzarech. You see, we were working with the assumption that after his tooth is knocked out, he's entitled to freedom, but he's not yet free until he gets to get shikhr. So it was comparable to our question of Mu'uk of get shikhr. No! Once his tooth is knocked out, he's gone. He walks. He's totally free. He doesn't need to get shikhr. He's his own man. So of course, I'm obligated to pay for any further damages. It has no relevance to our question. This Sani, we have a long b'risa with many opinions. Does he need to get... Does he not need to get the Sanya Bukulon? An Evid who was a recipient of all types of uh, afflictions and injuries. We know that the eye and the tooth uh, would allow him freedom. And likewise, there are 24 Russia Evarim, tips of the fingers, etc., which is discussed in Masechus Nagoyim. So, bottom line is if, a fla- if an Evid experienced any of those uh, injuries on the, hand, on the hands of his master, the entitled to go free, but it's only half the process. He still needs the uh, document. That's Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel. He's totally uh, free. He doesn't need a God Shikhr. He does need. He does not need. There were those who were going to strike a compromise between the various opinions, and they sort of a compromise as follows. We're going to adopt Rabbi Tarfin's view that no document is needed if the Evid lost his tooth or eye because those are actually mentioned clearly in the Psukim. Gave him that right. So as soon as that happens, he's free. Without any further requirements. Rabbi Kiva's opinion which is that he needs a shtar shikhrur, that's going to be applied in other cases, in other instances, b'shari varm, when he lost other limbs. Hoyel v'knas chachamim hu. Since it was only a knas established by the chachamim, so to affect proper freedom, he needs to get shikhrur. Ask him, what do you mean, knas hu? Knas, is it a, just a penalty? Hakroi kadashinan. We didn't make it up, it wasn't introduced by the chachamim. These are uh, drashes from sukim, that the other varm grant him freedom. Ela eim hoyel umidrush chachamim hu. We mean to say that since Anything other than Shein Ma'ayin, I learned through Adrasha, it's not clear cut. So, as Thesis explains, it isn't necessarily universally known and recognized as, you know, being forms of, of release. And therefore, you know, we're always afraid that the uh, owner might find him in the street. Ah, oh, you might have it. So, we want to steer clear of that. We require, require him to write him out get Shikhrun. Okay, so to summarize, a fellow who was let go by his master but still awaiting a get Shikhrun. Does the din of knas, shleishem shkolem, if you struck them by a shor, apply in this case? Is there payment? Does it go to the master? We had a shayla, we tried to bring some rayas, which were inconclusive. Here comes one more shayla. Iboilum, who could get shikhr? So once again, this fellow who slated for release, but still needs to get shikhr. He happens to belong to a kayin. Right? Who typically would eat, uh, an avid kayin eats uh, truma. He's kinyan kaspa, his possession, right? So at this point in his life, when he's half in, half out, can he still continue with the truma or not? Shall we say, can you cast by Rachmana? Torah says, if the kain owns an evan, he can feed in truma. But he's no longer his possession. He gave him up. Or shall we say, since he's still awaiting to get shechror, he's still has one foot in, Kinyan Kaspa, Kirimei, he's still considered Kinyan Kaspa, and he's entitled to Trum. Which way is it? Tashma, we're going to bring a riot. So here we're going to have a case of 
you know, an Evid Kain who, who's not working for his master and still can have Truma. Here goes. So you have a Kayhenis woman, a mistress, who owns a, a maidservant who can eat Truma at this point. But they went into some dark place. They both gave birth at the same time. Babies were mixed up. One of them is the real Kayim, son of the mistress. One of them is the Evid Kayim, son of the maidservant. Now they can both eat Truma. A Kayim can eat. And the Evid of Kayim can eat. We just don't know who's who. Are you the owner and he's your Evid? Or are you the owner he's your Evid? But either way, they're still okay with Truma. But they have to get their truma portion together at the granary. We don't want to give the Evid or a Suffolk Evid his own truma, lest the people think that he's a coin. So they have to go together. Okay. Once they grow up and they become adults, they have the ability to instigate um, you know, legal processes. So both uh, kids turn adults. Now release each other. If I'm the owner, I'm releasing you. If you're the owner, you're releasing me. So what do we see? Even though, you know, <laughs> nobody's working for anybody until now because we had no idea who the owner is and who the evidence. So they're both free, so to speak. But they're still entitled to, uh, even the, the evidence amongst the two people, right? one of them is an evidence, he's still entitled to truma. That proves to us that if you're still awaiting to get Shikhrur, you're enough of an Evid Kain that entitles you to Truma. How could you compare? Awesome. If you realize that over there, one of them is certainly the Evid, a full Evid. It's not like his owner gave up on him. It's not like Mukab gets Shikhrur that we discussed before where he was released, the owner was Mafkin. No, nothing like that happened. It's a question of identity. But whoever the Evid is, he's fully owned by his master. And that's the terrorist of the Gemara. That's why he can eat from Hasam im Yavel Yoviyaymer. Suppose the Yavel would come one day and tell us exactly who's who. Yavel Bachad Minayu the Evid. We point to this fellow, you're the Evid. Kinin Kaspa Karinim Bey. He's fully owned by the other fellow. There's nothing inherently wrong with his ownership. And that's why he eats Truma. Hacha, but in our case, with the other relinquished rights, he was Mavke the Evid. Lav Kinin Kaspi, who clap, perhaps. He's no longer regarded as Kenin Kaspar because he gave up that financial component, that financial ownership. So that was the question. And we left it inconclusive. Okay, let's uh, briefly summarize. If I write a Shtar Shikhrer, releasing only half the event, that's a discussion we had yesterday, a Machlaikis, according to Rabbanon, it wouldn't work. Says Rabba, but let's say I first gave away half the, uh, the event, then I write a Shtar on the other half. That's perfect because at that point I'm fully letting go. So the Shtar Shikhrer is affecting a full release. Abaye asked for my Brysa, which seemed to indicate otherwise. We had several Pshatim in the Brysa, either because it wasn't a full gift. He only gave the Avadim half, uh, half each. That isn't indicative of full release. Or uh, they were both put in the same Shtar. You can't do two releases of the same Shtar. Then we discussed the case where an Evid had been owned by two people. One of them let go. So now he's a half Evid, half Ben Chirin. Exactly what did he do? In terms of marriage, he's stuck. If he was struck down and killed, then uh, half his value belongs to the owner, half to the Yerushim. If he was merely injured, well, it depends what day it happened. If it's on the day that he's meant to work, then his owner gets everything. Otherwise, he keeps it. An owner was Mafka the Evid. The Evid still needs a Shtar Shikhra. We call him a Mu'ukav Get Shikhra. He's still waiting to get Shikhra. If he's struck down by a shirt, who typically plays... 30 sell it to the owner. What happens in this case? Does it go to the owner or not? Is there a knas in this case? Is he in, We left it unresolved. Same question regarding his entitlement to Truma at this point. Is he called Kinin Kaspar or not? We left it unresolved. Okay, Hashem to be continued tomorrow. All the best to you and Hatzlacharana.